Worship you till the very 
opportunity, Father, to be here tonight to give you praise and glory. I thank you, Lord, Father, for every individual in this place tonight, every spirit, Lord God, that is in this place that glorifies you, every soul that seeks you out, Lord God, the heart that desires to be in your presence. Lord, in the name of Jesus Christ, forgive me, Lord, forgive this vessel, because I am a sinner, Lord God. In the name of Jesus Christ, I plead the redemptive blood that was shed on the cross of Calvary. Lord, that you would anoint these lips of flesh and blood to bring forth your holy, powerful word that is alive, that will never, ever come back void. That in the name of Jesus, lives will be changed, minds will be, will be changed, Lord God, that men that at one time sought out the enemy will now seek with a tenacity desire to serve you and to glorify you, Lord God. Hallelujah. Keep us attentive for you in your word and to be able to search you out, Lord God, that when we leave this place, we will leave this place with something fresh and get placed within us, Lord God. Yes. Not just something to experience or to feel an emotion, Lord God, but out of obedience to, to serve you in obedience, Father. Yes. Keep us attentive, Father, that only the name of Jesus can get all the glory and all the praise and all the honor. Yes. We thank you, Father. Have your way this day. In that blessed name, the name of Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. 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 Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. You know, just being real straight and transparent with you gentlemen, I do my very best. I, I make a lot of mistakes and I walk with God, but I do my very best to, to serve the Lord with all my heart. Amen. And I'm not, I'm, I'll be straight with you, I'm not a promiscuous man, I'm not a masturbator, I'm not a pornographer guy, I'm not into that kind of, I don't do any of that. I'm not, I don't, I'm not into, I'm not, I, don't, I, don't, I, don't, I don't do alcohol, I don't do wine, I don't do wine coolers, I don't do beer, I don't smoke cigarettes. Not that that's what's going to keep me in heaven, but I'm just saying I don't do any of that. So I do my very best to serve the Lord, then I go out of my way. To do what God has called me to do in Scripture, and I still make mistakes, and I still blow it sometimes. And so I'm saying this not to put myself in any other position than anybody else that's put in this in this room tonight. But even then, my flesh my flesh kicks and bucks. So I know that if my flesh is kicking and bucking. You guys have to be kicking and bucking, brother. I tell you, everybody, everybody has to be going through some stuff. We're going to be going through that for the rest of our lives. We need to be able to be to be victorious in Christ, regardless of what we're exposed to every single day. We need to be able to, uh, it can't because uh, you need to be victorious. Oh, Even though we make mistakes, you get right back up into the fight, get right back into the ring, and keep moving forward. So we are going to, we need to be victorious all the time. Because I see many brothers that, that in their walk with God, they make a mistake, and next thing you know, they make a mistake, and they're gone. I wonder where they're gone, you know. I you make a mistake, you just acknowledge a mistake, and let's get right back up, and let's get busy yeah. yeah. We need to be able to do that. In our, in our walk with God, you know, we need to be in a place that, that we can be victorious all the time. I said so, you know, victorious all the time in God. That even though we blow it, we make mistakes, we'll be able to, um, to learn from everything that we go through. The things that, that would normally devastate our lives when we're exposed to certain circumstances. It's not going to be the determining factor of how we worship God or how we're going to continue forward in Christ. That no matter what we're exposed to, whether it's good or bad we will still be able to move forward yeah. in our walk with God. And we'll be men that will be serving the Lord for the rest of our lives. And even your, your spouse and your children, your grandchildren will acknowledge you as not just a man, but a great man of God. Amen. That because 
uh, I, I believe that a great man of God is one that understands that he makes mistakes and is able to get right back up and to be able to admit it to, to the Lord and to a brother and to your family that we made a mistake. That's why one of the main things I tell a lot of brothers when you when you hurt your family, go back to them and tell them you're sorry for what you've done. Sit down with your daughters and your sons and your spouse and you tell them, you know what, I, dad messed up, grandpa messed up, and this is, but I love you guys and we need to be able to do that. A lot of men want to go hard and don't want to say nothing. We need to be able to do that. Otherwise, you're creating another generation of, of a curse that they're going to follow in the same footsteps. We always use the excuse, well, my dad never told me he loved me. I don't care what dad did. Do. You need to be in a position, even though dad never told you I'm sorry. Dad never told you I love you. Dad never hugged you. You need to be able to hug your kids and your boys and your children, tell them you love them and buy them gifts and just shower with them with the love that only Christ can give. Amen? That we are no longer just barely surviving. Because sometimes it seems that we just barely make it to church. We're barely surviving. Like we're just struggling and we just, we don't need to live like that. We can live victorious every single day. In a mighty, mighty position, we can live victorious for the Lord all the time. That we are no longer overwhelmed by the, the past vices. Those things that had the tightest grip on us are no longer dictated our present or our future. They're no longer that thing, that, that, that the desire that we once had for the flesh, now we have a desire to crucify this flesh. Because we take that with us when we serve God. We have the desire, I've said it many times, I'll say it again. When we're serving God and we take the desire for strange flesh, we take it with us. And we're doing our best to serve God, but we entertain this thought of having a desire for strange flesh no matter where we're at. And we can't shake this from our head no matter, I don't care what store you go in, you can go to auto parts and you have a good thing. <laughs> And, and your, your mind is entertaining this thing, and you're wondering how and how come, and what if, and what if. Because you have a desire for strange flesh. You could have, you could have the most beautiful woman as a wife, and you could be married to her, you know, years and years and years. But can I be a little straight with you? Dylan, amen. Ain't you no know, sisters in the house, right? Some of you brothers better than sisters. You can have a most beautiful wife that's straight up physically perfect that way. And so after 15, 20 years, you're like, you know what I'm saying? And then you get something that's totally not even half as beautiful as your wife, and you're like, <laughs> yeah, because you've never tasted that. You've never touched it, and the flesh is like that. So the mind just entertains this thing, and we take this desire for strange flesh in our walk with God, and wherever we go, we're thinking this thing all the time, over and over and over. Well, I love God, but you're in his body. Yeah. Unless you yeah. make yourself a eunuch. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. The Bible talks about three different types of eunuchs. So don't, don't come at me to help with that, brothers. Amen. <laughs> Matthew 7, 24. I'm going to read a lot of scriptures today, but I'm going to go quickly for time's sake. Matthew 7, 24. I'm going to read 7, 24, 25. It says, Therefore, everyone who hears these words of mine and puts them into practice, is like a wise man who built his house on the rock. The rain came down, the streams rose, and the winds blew and beat against the house, yet it did not fall, because it had its foundation on the rock. If the foundation is right in Christ, we used to say you can build anything on it, but I don't, I don't like to use that phraseology, that, that, that word build, because not everything is on it is what you built. You see, so what I the word, the word I use is whatever is placed on that foundation, on that foundation, it, it won't it won't affect the foundation. This is why I say I say what is placed because sometimes there's things that you build in, in your walk with God. The Lord gives the ability to do that, and you prosper in ministry and financially in your family. But then there's things that that the enemy has come used to come against you, or just life happens. And there's tragedy, there's devastation, and there's, there's, there's family members, your own spouse that goes sideways. But if your foundation is on Christ, it does not matter what is 
placed on it, whether it's good or we would perceive it as bad, it will not affect the structure. It will not affect the foundation. So it's not so much what it's just built, because sometimes you're not building that devastation, that destruction that came upon your family. Somebody else put it there, or you allowed it to be put there, but somehow it's there. But it will not affect that foundation, so the foundation has to be primary. The foundation has to be perfect because we're walking in God. We're doing our best walk in God. And we continue to fail. We go sideways. If you know we're not serving God, we're gone. We're doing this and that. And we disappear. Then later on we come back. We're in love with God again. It's just not, that's not, that's not the thing to do. As I said, we make one mistake, come back to the Lord. But we don't want to vacillate back and forth like that all the time. Imagine what your spouse and your, your children know. Your children hear or see, you know. Praising God in church is love of the Lord. The Lord bless you. Cry to the Lord like that. And New Year's comes back. And praise your New Year's. Yeah. We can we can we can pretend and hide amongst the brethren. We are never gonna pretend and hide in the things of God. Never. You're never gonna be able to pretend. Amen? Amen. The foundation I'm talking about is, is, is in Christ. So how do we make this foundation? How do we make it how do we build this foundation within us and under us that, that that's gonna sustain no matter through the through the through the hardest storm? Example, if you're a single brother, you're a single man, and you're with a sister late night, you're having a good time, and it's already late, and all of a sudden you get that twinkle in your eyes, she's got that twinkle too. If you choose not to give into the flesh, and you consider Christ first, and you walk away, that's difficult to do, but that means Christ is first, that's the foundation. If you choose the twinkle, it's obvious Christ is not the foundation. Because we should not give in that easy. You see, we're real quick to serve God. Well, as long as, as long as I'm not tempted, I'm cool with Jesus. As long as nobody tempts me or pushes my button, I love me the Lord. But as soon as sister pushes my button, brother, pushes that button, oh, what Jesus? Yeah. And, and, and men are failing many times because we're good while everything is real smooth, while everything is, is running well. And you can go for months and years sometimes without ever being physically confronted by another man. I'm talking about busy like a fight. You know, to be in a real straight up, straight up swinging fight at a gas station or something, that's crazy. That's crazy talk. But a lot of that can be avoided. What do we do as soon as somebody tells you something, in a, you know, in the gas station or whatever? Right away, the flesh flares up, and you want to forget Jesus. I'm going to sock this dude up. <laughs> yeah. Real quick, you want to get in the flesh. Those are the perfect opportunities to be able to crucify this thing that, has been, that we've been dealing with all our lives. That's why it's like a vicious cycle. We go through the same thing over and over and over. Same thing we were doing in junior high, high school, and as adults and older, still doing the same thing, a little older, a little fatter, different city, different house. And we're doing the exact same thing over and over and over because the foundation is in sex. The foundation has to be first. Because we're going to change. We're going we're gonna to continually experience different things. We're going to live in, in different homes. You can, live, you can grow up in one house and be a young man in a house and do real well. And all of a sudden you get married, you move to another city, you live in another house, and you have all different neighbors. You guys ever have some crazy neighbors? Not just crazy neighbors, but some fine ones too. Yeah. You can't even walk outside without like man. As a man of God, you're trying to do your best. It's bad enough when you gotta find neighbor when when neighbor wants you. All of a sudden, your lawn is immaculate, not because you like to cut it either. You don't got a single weed on your lawn, man. You know you ain't got nothing busy. You don't like even pulling weeds. Last house, it tore up. Weeds like that, lawn all tore up. Crab grass everywhere. This house, you got a fine neighbor, and your lawn is immaculate. But you're not entertaining her, but your flesh is saying, go pull the weeds. We think it's no big deal. Just go pull the weeds. You're crazy. Not weeds, pull the weeds. And we don't see it like that. Because we're not considering Christ first. 
Amen. We need to consider Christ for it. I'm going to read all the scripture right here. The foundation is this. Look at Romans 12. I'm going to read 4 through 20. So stay with me. Follow along again. Okay. Romans 12, 4 through 20. Here's the foundation. Just as each of us has one body with many members, and these members do not all have the same function, so in Christ we are many, we who are many form one body, and each member belongs to all the others. We have different gifts according to the grace given us. If a man's gift is prophesying, let him use it in proportion to his faith. If it is serving, let him serve. If it is teaching, let him teach. If it is encouraging, let him encourage. If it is contributing to the needs of others, let him give generously. If it is leadership, let him govern diligently. If it is showing mercy, let him do cheerfully. Love must be sincere. Hate what is evil, cling to what is good. Be devoted to one another in brotherly love. Honor one another above yourself. Never be lacking in zeal, but keep your spiritual fervor serving the Lord. Be joyful in hope, patient in affliction, faithful in prayer. Share with God's people who are in need. Practice hospitality. And it says practice hospitality, not homosexuality. Amen. Bless those who persecute you. Bless and do not curse. Rejoice with those who rejoice. Mourn with those who mourn. Live in harmony with one another. Do not be proud, but be willing to associate with people of low position. Do not be conceited. Do not repay anyone evil for evil. Be careful to do what is right in the eyes of everybody. If it is possible, as far as it depends on you, live at peace with everyone. Do not take revenge, my friends, but leave room for God's wrath, for it is written, it is mine to avenge, I will repay, says the Lord. On the contrary, if the enemy is hungry, feed him. If he is thirsty, give him something to drink. In doing this, you will heap burning coals on his head. So in reality, we'll say, how in the world is that a spiritual act, a, 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 a work, a deed, that we will have our foundation in Christ? Because if you know that God is love, and everything he did was to bless somebody else, to serve somebody else that way, we know it's very easy to understand. So when you begin to pour out, like we talked about last week, in the same manner, what you're doing, you're doing exactly what the Father does. Mm -hmm. You know, and it's a fact, if you, have a, if you had a dad, that was real tore up, whether he was alcoholic or a, or a spouse, or he abused that way physically, you know, your mom or your, daughter, your sisters that way, and all the neighbors and everybody knew that, and all of a sudden you became of age, they would begin to watch you because they want to see if you're going to be like the dad. And many times some of the, the young men would do that. They would be with their girlfriends or teenagers and being rough with them that way, and people would say, he's just like his father. In the exact same way, when you begin to pour out, when you begin to minister to the people that are needed according to what Christ tells us here, what the Lord tells us, you're setting that foundation of who you are in Christ because that's the evidence of that. The Lord said, by the fruits you will know. Amen. The fruits is not by how many times you go to church. Amen. It's not the fruit, bro. I'll tell you right now. I said before, it's easy to praise God amongst you guys. It's easy, you brothers, to, to serve God because you guys are faithful brothers. It's easy to do that. But how about the midst of the darkest time? How, how, how easy is it to serve there when people are actually coming against you? Like I say, when the sisters are there trying to come at you that way, the brothers are coming against you when it's in front of you. If you smell something, you, you heard me say, if you smell something you haven't smelled in a long time, it brings back a memory. It brings back memories. Fast. Some of you, brother, you can smell something... The day that they had the, the, what do they call it, that hop thing here, I don't know, a couple weeks ago, our hop. I came down to, by the church, and pastor was doing a real big job, he was doing the tours there, and I went down over there a little bit further, right away I saw a skull. <laughs> right away. I said, pro, you smell it? She goes, what is that? That's straight up skull. And she, she was funny, she goes, there's a skull. <laughs> and really, she pushed her one looking on the ground. It's snowing a mile away, boy. Yeah. You're going to wrap it. 
smell it. <laughs> You'll smell it. Matthew 7, 26. And I'll go back to the minute. Matthew 7, 26. I'm going back to Matthew. But everyone who hears these words of mine and does not put them into practice is like a foolish man who built his house on sand. The rain came down, the streams rose, the winds blew and beat it against the house, beat against the house, and it fell with a great crash. See, first it said those that build their, their house on a, on a rock, the winds come and blow and all that water, it doesn't do anything to it. But then those that are actually building it on the sand, it says they had a great fall. The word says that, right here, this portion here, Matthew 7, 26, it says that the non-doer of the word actually built the house on the sand. It says he built it on the sand. So in reality, the house, I'm sure he didn't say, well, I know it's going to collapse the first grade that comes, I'm going to build it anyways. He thought that he was building it correctly in the right place. He thought what he was doing was right. But it wasn't until, it wasn't until the rain came that it exposed where he does and doesn't, does or does not stand in Christ. It wasn't until the wind began to blow because in reality he built the house on the sand but it could have looked just like the house that was on the rock. Look the same, same wood, maybe even the same color. It feels like the same house and it feels comfortable and I like it and I can rest in here and everything seems good but it wasn't built on the structure of the foundation of Christ. So in reality, it wasn't until tragedy hit until it until the rains came, the water came, that exposed where he does or does not stand in Christ. That's why it's easy to serve God amongst the brethren until somebody tells you something. Yeah. I ha I've had some sisters, even here at the church, I had some sisters that just love God, boy. Love the Lord. Like, that's a fire breathing woman of God. In the county jail. What happened? <laughs> One of the teachers pushed my kid in school. Well, we all get busy too. But even then, you still got to, you still got to say, well, I'm going to do something, but I'm going to hold up. We're real quick to praise God in, 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 in amongst everybody else like that way, but the first time that something goes wrong, as soon as the wind, the, the hurricane comes a little bit right away. Yeah. And we're real cool being married to our spouse, but the first time the fine sister winks at you, it's like, all of a sudden, you ain't got no hair and you're still putting dress on. <laughs> yeah, you're still. Yeah. You can't even walk into your job without sucking in your belly, you know. Walking all different like John Wayne, walking all cool and stuff. That's because she's there. Yeah. Everything changes just because something different is what you were exposed to. You see, it, once again, we need to be in a position no matter what happens. You've heard me say it many times, a lot of people love the Lord when they're in jail. I mean, don't get me wrong, some of your brothers, you know, I've been there too, come on, just tell them Jesus, but a lot of brothers, Jesus, that's really, you know. And I remember some of them brothers, I would hound them down, the other, these brothers too, they would hound them down, go to their house, ah, nothing. And as soon as you're in jail, they're not because you're really. I'll be straight. I ain't going. I ain't going. You got to learn. Bail me. I ain't bailing nobody. You got to take some heat. You're going to have to learn something. You know? They want to. Jesus. But you got to take a little bit of heat. What I'm saying. Imagine if we understood how to serve the Lord when everything is going. Everything is going great. Because remember, you might say, well, only when it's going great, I'll serve God. But you know what? When everything's going great, some people turn from God more than when something's going bad. Amen. Yeah. Because when everything's going great, I don't need Jesus. Yeah. As a man of God, right now, our, our situation now, what do we pray for? We pray for our health. We pray for our finances. We pray for our family. We pray for our jobs. And, you know, finances, you know. We pray for all these things, for tires in our car. 
But just the fact that you had a lot of money. Imagine if you had a lot of money. You didn't have to work. You had a lot of money. You had a lot of money. You were going to be praying for your car. Some of us have to go outside and want that car every day. Oh, <laughs> Make this car last one more day. Lord, this gas tank in the name of Jesus, Lord, let this gas add the fuel. You need to pray for tires? Yeah. You ain't got no tags. You know you ain't paying no tags. You want to pray for the tags. Lord, in the name of Jesus. What are you doing praying for the tags? But if you have money, you're not going to pray for tags. Your car breaks down, you go buy a brand new one. Rims, system, everything set up. Yeah. Right up like this. Come on. Yeah. If your health is real well, we don't pray for our health. Many times, if our health is perfect, man, I mean, praise the Lord. Yeah. So many times when things are at best, is when we decide not to seek God. So we need to understand that. We need to discern that. Because if we're going to continue to see, uh, succeed, to not vacillate back and forth in our walk with God, Amen. we need to understand that we need to be victorious in Christ, regardless of whether everything is hitting the fan, or everything is absolutely perfect, and the wife is acting right, the kids are acting right, acting right and all the bills are paid. Jesus. And I don't know, PG&E, nothing. Oh. <laughs> yeah. mm -hmm. But everything can be going real good, and we still walk in this flesh. Amen. You still walk in this flesh. How many of you grew up here in the Fresno? Okay, let me, let, me, let, me, let, me, let me ask something a little closer. How many of you grew up in this area in Fresno, like downtown, this neighborhood like this? Okay. So you know the neighborhood. You could go down the street, and you could, you could remember where you, you, <laughs> what you did in that building over there. Yeah. A house. Yeah, a place. Bars that are gone. You said, there used to be a bar right there. And what you did at that bar? That doesn't exist anymore. You remember. Because this is the flesh. And the mind is going to always remind you of that. You're the one that has to live victorious Amen. in the midst of this environment. Amen. You're the one that has to make the decision. There's no one going to make it for me. There's no one going to make it for you. It's going to be you and I making those decisions. You can know scripture back and forth. And your body will still kick and buck. Yeah. I've said this, I've said this, I've said this many times too. That's why I don't go to the theme parks. <laughs> I mean, I do my best not to, not especially on the water slide theme park. Yeah. Sisters make it everywhere. Yeah, I, I mean, my kids go, I'll pay for your ticket, you go, oh, damn it. I'm just not going. Because I know this flesh. I mean, well, I'm a man of God, I'm not going to touch nobody. I'm going to go. Broke nobody. But I can be sitting right there having a Subway sandwich and. and <laughs> yeah. Come on. That's what happens. So I do my best not to expose myself to that. Well, you're weak. Well, then praise the Lord. But I know when to, when to stand and fight and when to run. I know when to run. Because I know that I, I, I can't do that. My, my wife and I were talking about this at the other day. About, you know, people and Christians that still like to drink or drink wine or drink beer and wine coolers and all that kind of stuff. I said, you know, that's, I don't agree with it, but I know God ain't called me to do that. Because I know, I know my weakness. I know that what I used to do back in the days with alcohol. <coughs> if I can say, well, it's my daughter's uh, wedding and they're going to have champagne. Just celebrate <coughs> that wedding with my daughter. She's the last one to get married, and they want you to toast with champagne. I guarantee you, if I toast with champagne, it's over. I'll be swinging on the roof. I'm just telling you, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna allow myself because as long as I'm in this flesh, if I try to drink a little bit, he's he gonna be like, okay, I'm done. There's times to run. There's times to, you have to be victorious. Don't, don't, you can't rely on your wife to make you victorious in Christ. Well, she, oh, it's, she's the one, she's the problem. Well, she's not. The 
scripture even says you can position her spiritually how, you, how, how the Lord would have you. The man has the ability to do that. Amen. If she's tore up, you, you probably put her there. Amen. Yeah. Because of memory, because of experiences, things that have happened. Fix it. <laughs> Live victorious every single day. Stay with me. Amen. I'm all done. Once again, it wasn't until the rains came down that everything was exposed. You see, it wasn't until the floods came in that it turned into foundation. The hearers of Christ's word are divided into two parts, two sorts. Those that hear the word and they do it, and those that hear the word and do not do it. It's that easy. So the foundation is going to be in Christ for those that hear the word and they do it. That's the rock. The sand is those that hear the word and do not do it. That's the sand. It's really that simple. Because Christ and God is love. So when you pour out to somebody else, your foundation is being built in Christ. Because you're duplicating the heart of the Father. Exactly. So when people see the good deeds of Christ, they'll say, you're a, you're a Christian, or you love God, huh? you know. Or if you're rubbernecking everybody, they're going to say, well, that's a Christian blood right there. I'm not going to say that. Uh, your kids won't even say that. Your spouse won't even say that. Live victorious every single day. And I guarantee you, you'll begin to pour out in ways you have never poured out. Amen. 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 Very simple message, but very practical. But it's very important that you will no longer fluctuate back and forth. That your foundation will always be strong. It's a blessing to be exposed to everything that we experience every single day and let God's name be glorified with people around you. Because once again, we're exposed to all different types of people. All different types of people. Yesterday I was at Home Depot with Brother Mike. And uh, Brother Mike over here today, Brother here, right here. And I had gone to West Shaw first. They didn't have what we needed, so I called them to meet them over there at Kings Canyon. But while I was coming back to the car in West Shaw, you know, the gentleman looking for jobs there, you know, just in the, in the parking lot. And uh, he greeted me, and I said, Praise the Lord, thank you, Jesus. And all of a sudden, it lit up inside of him. And he stood up and started giving God praise. And he said, Praise the Lord. Just because of giving God glory ignited something inside of him. Yeah. So in everything, consider Christ. It doesn't matter what you've done, where you've been, what tragedy, tra tragedy you've come through, what drugs, what addictions, God can change all of that. Amen. It doesn't matter if your marriage is failing, God will fix it. Amen. It doesn't matter what you're going through financially, God will restore it. Amen. Where the enemy was, was using you in times past as a soldier for, for, the, for the enemy, now he uses you for a soldier in Christ. Amen. That your words will be anointed in a powerful word, in a powerful way that when you speak, People will be convicted because of the word that proceeds from your mouth. The Lord says, I'll anoint your lips in a powerful, powerful way. That you'll encourage and you'll give life instead of death. We give death for so many years. We don't need to do that anymore. We need to pour out life. And I'll say it again, as I do many times. Start pouring out life with those that are around you. So many men in here are struggling in their walk with God. And the Lord says, when they mourn, you mourn with them. And sometimes some of you are carrying your cross real easy, but some of the other brothers are having a difficult time carrying their cross. You should help them carry their cross. Amen. Because God has given you a spiritual strength to be able not only carry yours, but help carry theirs. Amen. And maybe somebody else's too. And drag another one with your foot. <laughs> he says, take your ten snakes and stretch them out. That the capacity will be greater. That way you'll be able to you'll be able to take in more. Stretch those ten stakes out. Amen. Instead of just trying to minister to one or two people, why not twenty-five or thirty? Oh, why not fifty or a hundred? Bow your heads, young ladies. We'll pray. We'll just look for the Lord in prayer. Don't be dismissed in just a moment. Bow your head and just close your eyes for the presence of the Lord. Father, in the name of Jesus, Lord, thank you, Father. Thank you for your word. I thank you for your presence in this place, Lord Father. Lord, I choose, Father, to serve you like never before. Father, I totally surrender my life to you. I love these men that are here, Father. I pray for them every single day. Lord, I pray that, that you would continue to raise us, Father, as one body. 
one body, Father, with many different gifts, many different talents. But as you would, you would reveal to us, Father, the gifts and the talents you have placed that you have chosen for us, Lord God, that we'll begin to step in and move in those gifts and those talents, Lord God. Not based on what we feel, but what you have called us to be, Lord Father. That the body will begin to be strong and mighty, one that has to be reckoned with by the enemy. With every head bowed and every eye closed, I would ask every individual in this place that if you do not know Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, we are men that in this place here tonight that every one of us that acknowledge Christ as our Lord and Savior has come to a repentant place in our lives and have acknowledged the Lord as our Lord and Savior. And it is not a time to be afraid, not a time to be embarrassed or ashamed of anything. It does not matter what anybody else thinks or anybody else that's around you, but a decision that you make. We are not promised tomorrow. Today is the day of salvation. And some of you might just want to come before the Lord and petition that the Lord will strengthen you in a mighty way or can help you financially in your marriage or physically. If you're needing Christ in any form, whether it's petition or salvation, I'm going to ask you not even to raise your hand, but I'm going to ask you to step out where you're at, and we're going to pray with you. Come on, come on, gentlemen. Step out where you're at, and let's pray with you. Where are you going? Let's talk to the Lord. 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 Come on, praise the Lord. Praise the Lord, hallelujah. We need prayer many times. It doesn't matter. You might say, I'm already blessed with God, but I want a double portion of the Holy Ghost. I want to come in agreement with the brother the Lord would use me. That the Lord will anoint my lips to be able to tell my, my family, my children, that the Lord will give me a boldness because sometimes we're ashamed, we're embarrassed of the gospel. We're afraid to speak in public. That the Lord will give me that boldness to be able to share the gospel with somebody. We need so much more men to come pray with these gentlemen here. Come on, prayer warriors. Men, come up and pray. Come on, gentlemen. Come on, pray with these men. They're coming to the front right here. I want every man to get somebody praying with them in here. Every man, every man, have somebody praying with them. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. And remember, gentlemen, don't be afraid to pray. Don't be embarrassed to pray. That's how we begin to release the gift God has given us. Because it's not going to happen until you begin to move. When you begin to move in ministry, that you're going to see how God will anoint your word to give you words of wisdom, but it's not going to happen until you step out of the boat. Once you step out of the boat, you'll see you'll begin to do more things in God that we want him to do in the boat. Let's pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, thank you, Lord, for these men. These men that are here, Father, in the altar area, Lord God, I pray for all their petitions, whether it's a petition, Father, of, of repentance, Lord God, acknowledging you as their Lord and Savior, I pray, Lord Father, at this very moment that they're receiving you as their Lord and Savior and that their names are being written in the Lamb's Book of Life. And from this day forward, Lord God, they will search you out with a tenacity, with a desire, a fervency, a zeal to serve you, Lord, to be obedient according to your word, to tell others of your mercy and your grace and your goodness. Or whether they're here, Father, because their petition is, is their health, Father. I pray that from the top of their heads to the soles of their feet, Lord God. I pray that you would heal them in the name of Jesus. They will recover, Lord God, and they will recover quickly. I pray for the brothers in need of their finances, employment, Lord God, that every need will be made, met over and above, that they will be able to bless you and bless all those you have called them to bless, Lord God. That the employment place, the finances, the bills will be met over and above for your glory. That man will not be lifted or glorified, but only in the name of Jesus Christ. I pray for marriages, Lord Father, right now. That in the name of Jesus, you would start with the man, Lord God. You would start with the man that you would, you would give him that ability to understand that you have given him that, that authority, that power to give life and not death. That you would anoint his words to speak to his wife and his children, Lord God. Words of life and words of encouragement. I pray, Father, for every man in this place tonight. Continue to raise us as soldiers, Lord, for your glory and for your honor. We thank you, Lord. We walk in the gifts you have placed within us, Lord Father. Allow us to be obedient according to your will, Father. We surrender to you. Lord Father, as we're dismissed tonight, Father, I pray that you dismiss the traveling mercy. Be with every one of us tonight, Lord God. Bless these men and their families. Protect them. Keep them safe that no harm, no sickness, no disease. No injury and no death, Lord God. That we will be victorious in every circumstance, in every situation. We will give you glory, give you honor, give you praise. Thank you, Lord God. Lord, I thank you for a special petition for these, these band members, Lord God. 
I thank you for these musician musicians, Father, the gifts you have placed within them, and they're here every Tuesday, Father, giving you glory and leading us into your presence. I thank you for the sisters and the brothers in the kitchen, Lord God, that you have allowed them to, to, to move in their gifts and making the meals for us every single Tuesday, Lord God. Continue to bless them as well and protect them. Thank you, Lord. We give you all the glory and all the praise. In the blessed holy name of Jesus Christ we pray. Amen and amen. God bless you, gentlemen. We just speak from the love and the of our Lord Jesus Christ. Greet one another in the Lord.